and he'll be talking to us about uh, meditation. And uh, so he's since about last year, he began meditating about 20 minutes every day. And uh, he found it really beneficial to him. So he'll be talking to us more about meditation and yeah. All right, so uh, I'm Eric Chen, um, and let me share my screen real quick. There we go. All right, can everyone see this? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, good. So I'm going to be talking about mindfulness and meditation. Um, I'm a 12th grader from Quartzville High School uh, in Los Angeles County in California. So uh, yeah, I'm in a different time zone right now. Um, and I think most of you guys are on the East Coast and whatnot. So mindfulness and meditation, it's really important. And I'd like to talk to you guys about it. So here we go. First we should uh, get to know what exactly is mindfulness and what is meditation, right? Because it's not real useful to us if we don't understand it real well. Um, so mindfulness is essentially living in the here and the now. It's living in the present moment and not thinking about the past or the future or um, worrying about things, right? Really you notice that you have a lot of thoughts coming and going um, all the time. And you tend to think about things that happened in the past or things that might have, you, you know, that might happen in the future. Um, so mindfulness is not that. Mindfulness is being aware of everything. Your, you know, your senses, your five senses, uh, your touch, your sight, your smell, your hearing, and your taste, all of those. It's being aware of that and not being judgmentally aware of it, mind you. But it's, you know, you have to feel everything through your senses. Uh, and therefore, you get to know your environment. When you use your senses and you really pay attention to what you're hearing or seeing, you get to notice every little detail about everything around you. Uh, and it seems like that's not something we do very often these days. You know, we don't touch the things that we might be holding uh, and really feel the textures on them and maybe how hot or cold they are. Uh, and we're not looking around to see every little detail about everything around us and appreciate it. Uh, you should also be aware of your feelings. What are you feeling right now? And if you realize what you're feeling right now, whether that be happy, sad, um, a little um, of anything, really, maybe angry or any other feeling, you're being mindful of your emotions. So that's part of mindfulness as well. And of course, you need to be aware of your thoughts because what's going on inside of your head is important and you should know about it. Uh, if you just let the thoughts fly around and bounce around in your head, then you're not being very mindful. All right, so let's take a look at this rose. Um, when you're holding this rose in your hand, uh, are you thinking about it? or are you experiencing it? Because those are different things, right? Uh, when you're experiencing it, you really feel it. You really see it and you appreciate it. You see its beauty. This is a pretty nice looking rose. It, um, because I, I feel the textures of the petals and the stem and the leaves and everything. I see its nice shade of red. Um, I get to 
smell its nice aroma. You know, we all like to smell a flower now and then. And if you don't, you should do that more often. And, you know, hopefully you're not touching the thorns, but if you do touch the thorns, you can be mindful while doing that too. Be mindful of how that feels. Now, that's very different from thinking about it. When you're thinking about the rose, you might thinking you might be thinking like, oh, uh, a few months ago, I was walking by this um, line of businesses and I just see this flower shop. I looked inside the window and there was this beautiful bouquet of roses and I really liked it. And this reminds me of that. And then you realize that you're not really experiencing the moment. The moment's already passed and you didn't appreciate this rose in your hand right now. Um, instead, you thought about the past and that's not being mindful. To be mindful, you have to experience what's in front of you. You have to see it, smell it, feel it, all of that. So next time you uh, get a hold of a flower, right? you should really experience it. And the same goes for um, eating. You know, when you're eating anything, you want to make sure that you're experiencing the eating rather than thinking about it. Because oftentimes I realize that um, in the modern day, people like to use their devices at the dinner table or you know, go in front of the TV, sit on the couch, uh, get some snacks, eat something uh, as like just something that they're doing while they're watching TV. When instead you should really be focusing on the sensations, the experience of eating. And it turns out that when you focus on eating rather than watching TV or talking to your friends while you're eating, you actually feel much better. Um, that there are a lot of good effects for doing it as well. Um, you get to really savor the food. You get to taste instead of swallow, right? Because there's a difference between just letting it slide down your throat and that's that. And actually really, really savoring the taste, the flavor, and enjoying every bit of food that you eat. You might have never even thought about that that way. Eating in a way that you experience it, that you really enjoy it. That, uh, it's, you know, it could be the best thing ever as long as you apply mindfulness to it. So that's mindful eating for you. And I suggest you try it. And, you know, this can be done with anything, really. Mindfulness is applicable to everything in our lives with things like mindful walking, um, you can go outside, take a walk, and just be mindful. Now, you might be wondering, okay, how do I mindfully walk? Don't I have to look ahead and know where I'm walking, or else I might just, I guess, fall over? Well, mindfulness is being aware of your surroundings, being in tune, being in the moment, the here and the now. So you don't ever have to worry about messing something up um, because you're fully aware of everything. And that's at the highest level of concentration and focus you can get because it, when you're not mindful, your mind is somewhere else. It could be in the past. It could be in the future. It could be just not where you are right now. So when you go walk, you can talk to the person you're walking with, or if you're going alone, just know that you should do it mindfully because even something like walking uh, to go to somewhere, it can be an enjoyable experience. As long as you feel the air around you and see the sights around you, whether that be a city, the buildings, you know, the people, the cars, or a natural place like the trees and the, all the plants and animals around you, 
you feel the temperature of the air and it's an enjoyable experience. Even if you're just walking to get somewhere, you can do it mindfully. So meditation, what's meditation? It's a mind training technique that cultivates mindfulness. And we just discussed all of the things that make up what mindfulness actually is. Um, we want to be mindful. So how do we do it? We meditate. And so I want everyone to do this experiment and just sit in your chair or wherever you're sitting right now. Just sit down, close your eyes, sit up straight, back straight, proper posture, and focus on your breathing. Don't think about any thoughts. Do this for three minutes. I'll set a timer and tell you when it's over. And that was three minutes, go in and open your eyes. Now, I'd like to hear, how did everyone feel during that? Um, either through the chat or unmuting. I wanna hear you guys. Uh, how did that feel? What went on in your head? Did you succeed in not focusing on thinking about a bunch of things? Did any thoughts arise? very peaceful. Now that's ideal right there. We all need to, from time to time, take a few minutes to do nothing at all. Close our eyes and just relax. 
and relaxed. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. Thoughts were a little noisy, refreshing. So, yeah, good, relaxed, refreshing, peace, refreshing, peaceful. Those are all the ideal effects. Thoughts were a little noisy. That's a good one um, to you know to notice because when you close your eyes and you try to calm down the thoughts and make them go quiet, you realize that, hey, it's actually a little difficult to do that. Some thoughts running through your mind. Forgot about your thoughts. It's good that um, the thoughts, when they go quiet, uh, yeah, so about those thoughts, they run wild, right? They are bouncing around in your head. They're doing their own thing. And you realize that you can't exactly control them sometimes uh, for those who experience the thoughts running around. It's like a wild monkey and you're trying to leash it. What bird is warbling in the backyard? Same thoughts, they always arise. And our minds love to do that. They, it just loves to create things to think about. It likes to consider things. It likes to think about things. It likes to worry about things. It's like a wild monkey. And we're trying our best to leash it when we close our eyes and relax. But it's not easy, is it? It doesn't seem to be... Uh, the easiest task to just maybe hold down this wild monkey while it's trying to uh, run around and take you along with it. Because as you might notice, those thoughts come up and you think about them a little and you think, oh, huh, that's interesting. And you think about them a little more and, huh, well, you start getting really attached to that thought and then the thought carries you away. And after no time at all, you think, or you notice that I just got taken away by this thought when I'm trying to not think about things. So it's pretty difficult to do that. Um, so what meditation essentially is, is taming that monkey mind of yours, that wild monkey running around uh, uncontrollably. It, you're taming it and breathing is the pull to which you tie it. So if you control the monkey, you can control your life. That's what meditation is. It's very powerful. Uh, it can control the hardest thing to control in your life imaginable. And therefore, if you meditate, you control your life. And then you won't be walked around by the monkey while it's running around and you're just being dragged by it on leash. So why do we meditate? Well, here's this. Um, personally, meditation has brought me a lot of good things. I've been able to, um, well, initially, let's start from the lockdown. Last year in 2020, in March, the lockdown happened where I am and I could no longer go to school. Um, so I had to spend the rest of my, what was that, a sophomore year, my 10th grade year uh, at home, virtual school. And I was at home a lot more of the time then. Uh, I would try to pay attention to the teacher, what the teacher is saying. And I realize I just cannot focus because of these cars and motorcycles and fire trucks outside. And it was very frustrating for me. Um, I would complain a lot about it. And it, to a lot of people, it may seem like, hey, that's not that big of a deal. They're just passing by, uh, making a little noise for a few seconds, and that's that. And that is what that was. But I got personally so annoyed at that. But after I began to meditate, all that frustration and negativity 
that came from the noise just soothe it was soothed it went down it wasn't as bad anymore and over time it got less and less uh effective of me so after a few months i was able to let the sounds come into my room pass through me and you know it, the thoughts came and went as opposed to <laughs> reacting like that motorcycle that just made some noise right now um to to demonstrate my point perfectly it goes through i let it come and go and that's that meditation helps us do those sorts of things and overall it's not just that example of course my life was improved in so much through meditation uh i felt generally happier and you know motivated to share the benefits with everyone so here are the benefits uh that are actually supported by numerous scientific studies like there are so many research uh projects dedicated to the effects of mindfulness and meditation and it's very very well established in the scientific community that these are very clear benefits of meditation all for a very small time investment which I'll get to in a bit um so that includes reduced stress personally i've you know school is probably the most stressful thing for teens and children uh it all that homework all that work you have to do you have to do so much well stress is reduced with meditation that's i think that's motivating enough but also it improves your memory improved memory is always good we want to uh perform better at school right our academic performance is much better if we have better memory and in everyday life as well we talk to people we say these things we say oh hey maybe um i'll do this for you after a few hours and then you completely forget well it can improve your memory scientifically proven increase the attention span um so there's this concern that over the generations we've been losing our attention span very slowly especially with electronics well this can really bring your mind back from that minuscule attention span that you may have it in- it improves it and you can pay attention to things better because well that's just the nature of being mindful you pay attention to everything around you and this mindfulness meditation that's the kind of meditation it is cultivates that so it increases your attention span um uh, enhanced willpower you have uh, more of a desire to do these things rather than be lazy and just not do them because often times i know that a lot of people around me they'll just say i got to do this but i really really don't want to so i just won't and then that's really the end of that they know that they need to do something but they just don't have the willpower to do so and i'm sure this happens with chores or housework or homework or even saying one thing to someone that those could all be um handled better with better willpower derived from meditation better sleep habits well we all want that uh day by day i think especially high schoolers we get really tired we have a lot of work to do and at the end of the day it's already midnight or something and we still haven't gone to sleep and we have to wake up so early the next day and we just aren't getting enough sleep meditating actually does improve your sleep habits which is so very valuable for improved academic performance and that's a really important one and better performance in social 
environments and in job environments and everything in your life, you perform better because we all need sleep. Uh, meditating also gives you less anxiety and depression because anxiety and depression are very common in the modern day. Um, there are a lot of people, especially adolescents, teenagers, they have anxiety problems. They struggle with depression. There are a lot of adults with de depression as well. It's a huge problem. And meditation can solve that. Just being aware of the present moment, living with the flow, can really reduce the effects or eliminate. And of course, it's not just less bad things. It's also things like greater compassion. With meditation, you can be nicer to the people around you because we all know that sometimes we can be a little mean to the ones we love, to the ones we care about, and probably just everyone in general. Someone goes up to you, asks uh, if they can use your phone for a minute, and you say, no, I'm having a bad day. You don't get to use my phone. But, well, it's, it's a little act of kindness, but it goes a long way to lend someone your phone or help someone out with something or maybe even just tell someone the time. And for those of whom you love, maybe doing them a favor or just talking to them nicely in general, you have greater compassion and you're just overall a nicer person to be around. And that makes you happier and that makes everyone else happier. So this list of benefits that meditation can bring you should be really enticing like just by sitting around and doing nothing i can get all of this no payment nothing just sitting around for a certain amount of time every day we can get this yeah i think that's pretty amazing so you're probably wondering after all of that how do you do it well let's see First of all, we need to pick a posture. So I'm sitting in my chair right now. It's pretty comfortable. Um, so you should find a comfortable place to sit and choose one of these postures to be in. Whether that be cross-legged, a lotus position that Buddhists often use, um, kneeling, uh, a chair or a stool, or lying down. Personally, I like to use the chair uh, when I meditate, it feels nice. And well, you have to have your feet firmly planted on the ground as well, not hanging or like floating up or anything. And I will tell you that if you try to meditate lying down, make sure you're not tired or something because you might fall asleep. The relaxed state of meditation is very likely to cause you to just get knocked out while you're lying down. So be aware of that. Uh, I recommend the chair, but if you don't have a chair, cross-legged or lotus works as well, or even kneeling. So you should do this in a quiet environment. Find a quiet environment, get into one of these postures, close your eyes, and focus on your breathing. That's the gist of it. You breathe in, feel the air going through your nostrils into your lungs and breathe out. Feel the air exiting your nostrils from your lungs, the warm air, and just repeat that. Preferably you, um, when you're meditating, you breathe through the nose rather than the mouth. It has a better effect. And focus on that. We all know the technique of deep breathing. Uh, and this, while it's not exactly deep breathing, it's breathing and focusing on that breathing. And, you know, 
uh, when you focus on something, you're not thinking about other things. Right? That's just the reality of how our minds work. Uh, you think that, well, maybe I could think about something else while I'm focusing on my breathing. No, that's just not how it works. We can only focus on one thing at a time. And if you make that your inhalation and exhalation, then you'll be fully focused and in the present moment. So that's the why behind you focusing on your breathing. And make sure that your breathing is natural. Don't make it forced. Don't make it hyperventilating or too slow or just just breathe normally and then observe your breathing uh, as opposed to forcefully pumping something and making it work meditation should not require so much strain and effort that you get frustrated at it it's a natural feeling you go through it naturally all right so how much time should I do it for? Mm, I'd say, well, first of all, when should you do it? Anytime you feel comfortable. Preferably when you're not hungry, too full at your right after eating, or tired, because all of these things can be a disturbance. And, you know, uh, for obvious reasons, if you're too hungry, you, you're just gonna be thinking about your hunger the whole time. And that's not good because that would mean you're thinking as opposed to being mindful. If you're too full, you might get tired. Um, your body's trying to digest all of that and it just, it's not the best time for you to be meditating. And of course, when you're tired because you might fall asleep, which personally I think Hey, that's pretty funny, but also, well, that's not really meditation anymore. You just need sleep. So as a beginner, I'd say you should start off with 10 minutes every day. Just set a timer for 10 minutes and sit down, get comfortable in a quiet place where no one can disturb you or the quietest place you have if you don't have a perfectly peaceful place to be. And relax everything you know if you have tension in your muscles make that go away as well and just breathe and focus on your inhalation and exhalation that's the ideal uh routine for a beginner and it's not a lot of investment at all i mean uh, we think that for all those benefits, we'd have to pay or something, but all we have to do is just give 10 minutes of our day to it. And over time, as you become more comfortable with meditating and you feel that, hey, my thoughts are getting quieter now, um, you can increase the time. But there, there's often this issue with... Uh, people who are only starting to meditate where they get restless and they, they want to move around. And I've heard that there are some children who've tried to meditate and all they could do was like, shake or they couldn't handle sitting still for a long amount of time. And this goes for some adults as well because they're restless and they feel the need to do something and they just can't sit still well, that's caused by the mind and not being mindful, that restlessness. So mindfulness meditation directly goes against that. So don't worry if it feels unbearable to sit and do nothing for a long time. That's okay. So you want to aim over time for 20 minutes a day. Uh, you start off with 10 and you want to regularly do it for 20 eventually. If you can reach 20 minutes of meditation a day, I guarantee you that your life will change after some time. You want to do this consistently, uh, 20 minutes every day. And if you miss one, that's perfectly fine. Personally, I've missed uh, meditations before. I've had to take care of something or 
do a bunch of work and I've maybe forgotten or just didn't have the time to meditate, that's okay. Meditation um, and doing it regularly, while it is beneficial, very beneficial, is not a requirement or something. And don't beat yourself up if you miss it. Because then you'll just start to get even more upset with yourself. That's not the point of meditation. Personally, I've uh, meditated daily for 20 minutes since July 2020. And it's really changed my life. So I recommend that you do it as well. So some problems that may arise with meditation and trying to do it at first is I have too many thoughts in my head. And as some people said earlier, that they have, you know, the thoughts that were a little noisy and some thoughts running through their mind. And that's perfectly normal. There could be a whole stampede of thoughts going on in your head. And you could notice that, and that's perfectly fine. That makes sense. That's just how our minds operate, that monkey mind of ours. So look at this image and imagine you are the sky and the clouds are your thoughts. The clouds go slowly. They move through your head and pass by. They come and they go. And you watch because you're the sky. You watch as the clouds come and go, one by one, however many there are. And don't push them. Don't try to make them go away. Because we all know that trying not to think about something makes us think about it. That's ironically how things work with our minds. So don't do anything. Just watch as they come and go. If you have too many of them and you get carried away by one of them, don't blame yourself because that's natural. You might begin to think, oh, um, I wonder when I should do this thing that I have to take care of, right? Maybe that's going to the store or doing a homework assignment. I should really plan a time for doing that. And then you think, oh, but I have so many other things to do. And I have this and this and that. And I have so much to take care of. And I feel so overwhelmed. And you realize that when you get uh, into that state of mind, it becomes difficult and you eventually realize that you're not meditating anymore. You're thinking about and worrying about all the things that you might have to do in the future or all the things that you didn't do so well in the past. And that's normal. Don't blame yourself if that happens and that you get taken away by the clouds. Remember that you're the sky and watch them come and go. Uh, so some problems, you know, this is the same uh, one with a different metaphor. You might have too many thoughts as you are sitting at the side of the road and watching the cars pass by. Now, of course, you watch the traffic go by, but eventually you might be taken away by one of the cars and you walk into the car, open the door, get in, and the car takes you away with it. And you didn't even realize but once you do realize that you've been whisked away by one of your thoughts, get out of the car, sit down back on the side of the road and keep watching the cars pass by. Now I'm thinking of a reason why you might even get into one of these cars uh, that I see. I see that ice cream truck right there. That's a little enticing. Maybe the driver asks you to go in. Thoughts can be that way. They can be really easy to just think about and get carried away with. So sit on the side of the road, watch the cars pass by, be the sky, watch the clouds pass by. Uh, and another problem, you may feel like meditation after a while has no effect 
nothing's happening and it's been weeks and I just want to feel better and I'm not feeling anything. That's normal because meditation, it's not one large hit to all of your troubles to make them go away. It's not batting the baseball of your sorrows or anything. Your sadness or whatever you're feeling may, may be stresses, anxiety, or depression will not instantly vanish when you meditate. Rather, it's a very gradual process where uh, we can compare meditation to little drips of water, consistent little tiny drops that drip down and hit a rock. The rock is the bad feelings that you feel um, from day to day life. And you realize over time, as you keep meditating and putting more drops of water onto that stone, that stone erodes because water is the most powerful thing of all. Uh, it can erode rock over a long period of time. And so that's what the meditation is. After a few months, you may begin to feel a lot better. It's not always going to be this way where you have these problems and you meditate, but nothing is going right. Nothing's getting better. And it just stays that way forever. Meditation is your way to feeling better. You just need to be patient and give it time. So by meditating, you are actually participating in a recent beneficial trend that everyone's participating in because um, there are articles everywhere. There are a lot of events, you know, where people, organizations, and just large groups of people are meditating and cultivating their mindfulness because it's you know scientifically proven to be beneficial. And so an example of that we can see is that is this right here. Meditation is the fastest growing health trend in America. And as you can see, it's described as a health trend and it's the fastest growing one. And this article is from 2018. So that's already been a few years. Meditation's popularity increased more than threefold in the US over the past five years, according to a new report from the CDC. And that's the official health organization. You know, they dictate all the things that we know about health. And over the past five years since 2018, it's gained a lot of traction in the United States. So that goes to show the rising popularity of it. Uh, another, oh yeah, there are some elementary schools that I've read that are ditching detention for yoga. Schools embrace mindfulness to curb discipline problems. So essentially what they're doing is rather than sending them to this gloomy room so that they can be punished for their bad behavior in detention, what they're doing is encouraging them to practice mindfulness through meditation or other forms of practices that encourage mindfulness. But it goes to show that even the education system is entering this trend. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, and meditation, of course, is becoming more popular among teens. So adults, teens, children, it doesn't matter how old you are. Meditation is good for you. It's never too late to start. One of the most su surprising trends is meditations. meditation among teens. Now, you know, teens have a lot of trends going on. We have this, we have that. There's TikTok. We're spreading a lot of um, different trends around. But meditation and mindfulness is one of them. And that's really exciting. And this article is from the beginning of 2015. So you can see that things are getting better. Things are changing. And mindfulness is something that we're starting to recognize as a necessary part of our lives. 
this is why you want to meditate every day because you'll feel much better overall. So what's there left to do? Let's do it. Now you did this for about, you know, you tried it out for three minutes earlier, um, but that's, you know, too short of a time. And it was kind of just silent probably. And all you could hear were your thoughts in your head. Well, let's go through this guided 10 minute meditation so that we can get a feel for how meditation is like. So here's this YouTube video and you can meditate with guides or not. Um, oh, I see something in the chat. The difference between, um, well, something related to meditation, uh, 20 minute meditation versus 20 minute nap. That's a good question. Um, a 20 minute meditation is you being fully aware and focusing on everything within you and around you, uh, and being mindful overall while a 20 minute nap is re-energizing when you wake up for sure but you are unconscious during a nap or sleep in general. And that doesn't give you room for being mindful, being aware of yourself and training your mind. Because while you're asleep, your mind just does whatever it wants. Uh, you're not consciously thinking about all this, these thoughts running through your head. And uh, while you're unconscious, you're not making this effort to control that wild and loose monkey that's running around. So 20 minute meditation is actively training your mind to be more mindful, to be more aware of everything and quiet down your thoughts. All right, so let's do this meditation and listen to the video. Uh, tell me if you can hear the video. I might be able to open this in another tab, so I'll do that. And I hope it's not as quiet. I feel like her voice might be a little quiet. Uh, so here we go. If it's too quiet, you can turn up the volume. I won't interrupt. Oh, you know what? That actually makes sense. I don't think I shared the sound at all. So I'm going to change my settings for that. Share sound. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, now you should be able to hear it. Welcome to this guided meditation for breathing. Begin by getting into a comfortable seated position, preferably in a chair with your feet planted firmly on the floor, legs uncrossed. Either way, take a moment to adjust your sit bones so that they feel balanced and even on either side. And let your spine strengthen and lengthen, feeling balanced and centered, as well as tall. Shoulders rolling back slightly to open up your heart, and letting your palms rest comfortably in your lap, however feels good to you. Allow your chin to tuck very slightly under, making sure your spine is perfectly straight. And when you're ready, lovingly close your eyes. For now, 
just become aware of your breath. What sensations do you notice? Do you feel perhaps a coolness at the tip of your nose when you breathe in? Maybe a warmth as you breathe out? What muscles are you engaging? As you become more aware of your breath, you also become more aware of your body as a whole. Noticing the points of contact between you and the surface on which you are seated. Perhaps feeling the sensation of clothes on your skin. And as you let yourself be more present in your body with your breath, we will begin to become more intentional with the style of breathing. On your next inhale, at a pace that feels good to you, let your belly expand as you breathe in, while your upper chest remains relatively still, breathing in through your nose, holding at the top, and when you're ready, exhale through your mouth, stomach contracting, ribcage continuing to remain relatively calm and still. At the bottom of that breath, repeat. Stomach expands as you breathe in, as your upper chest remains relatively still. Breath is held momentarily at the top. And when you're ready, exhale through your mouth, stomach contracting. All the while, your chest remains relatively still. Again, stomach expands as you breathe in. Through the nose, chest is still, and belly contracts as you breathe out through the mouth. Chest is calm. I want you to do this at a pace that feels good to you. But on your next exhale, take your time with it. Let every exhale be twice as long as every inhale. Moving at a pace that feels good to you. All there is right now is this breath. Breathing in through your nose, belly expands. Breathing out through your mouth, belly contracts. Every exhale is twice as long as every inhale. This helps you slow down. If any thoughts or feelings come up for you, that's okay. Do not judge yourself if you get caught up in anything. When this happens, just return your awareness to your breath. Keeping your upper chest relatively calm and still lets your body know that you are safe. Belly expands on every inhale and contracts on every exhale. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth with each exhale twice as long as each inhale at whatever pace feels good to you. If it helps you to count the breath, you could perhaps breathe in for four and out for eight. Or you can just focus on how it feels. We're all different. Choose what feels best for you. 
either way, any time a thought comes to mind, instead of forcing it away, just retune your attention to this beautiful breath all throughout the rest of this meditation. Remembering to keep your upper chest relatively neutral and calm. On your next inhale, take an extra deep breath in, both stomach and rib cage fully expanding now, feeling your entire torso expand as you breathe in, holding it at the top, and whenever you're ready, let it all go with an audible sigh. Ah, feeling your chest and belly contract. Notice a sense of expansion now as you breathe in, returning to a pace of breathing that feels good to you. Letting your chest rise on every inhale and fall on every exhale. You begin to become grateful to yourself for showing up for this, saying thank you out loud or in your mind. And you take this peaceful feeling with you as you begin to roll your shoulders Wiggle your fingers and toes. And, at a slow pace that feels good to you, open your eyes back to the world around you. And that was the 10 minute guided meditation for breathing. How does everyone feel after that? I know that was really relaxing for me. Did you notice thoughts come into your mind? Might that have, maybe they were really loud, relaxing, sleepy. Felt like it was an hour. No, the interesting thing about meditation is that it can feel like it's as long as maybe a few minutes, like a 10 minute meditation might feel like a few minutes, uh, like it was nothing at all. Um, if you're really into it, of course, and it could feel like an hour, it could feel like an eternity sometimes. I, I know that's how I felt 
when I first started meditating. Um, it would feel like forever and it just, it was not something that was easy to do for me. But after I did it for enough time, it indeed did feel relaxing and it felt like less than the amount of time than it actually is. And it just goes by and you're at peace. Better than sleep. Oh, I bet it is. And that's wonderful because sleep is already a really great feeling. You recharge, you relax, rest up. But this training your mind to feel um, more calm and peaceful, right? those descriptors, you cultivate your mindfulness and you really leash that monkey where it needs to be. And if it runs around, that's okay. You don't get angry at it for running around. You don't get mad at yourself for being pulled along with it on the leash. It's okay. And you feel great, ideally. So uh, here's a quote that I really like. And because it, it really represents the importance of meditation of mindfulness and how good it is for you. And you should sit in meditation for 20 minutes a day, unless you're too busy. Then you should sit for an hour. That last part might come a bit unexpected, but after that experience that you had, you'll likely agree with this, that you should meditate every day. And if you don't have the time to, you should meditate for longer. I like the concept of that. So keep that in mind. Any questions from anyone about mindfulness, meditation, uh, all of this in general? Maybe different ways of doing so or some clarifications on the concept. But just know, um, the answer to how can it help me is in every way possible. So uh, that's a good question. Two 10 minute sessions or 20 minutes per session. Uh, the longer you meditate at one time, the better the effect. Um, so let's take the example of 20 minutes, all of these equaling 20 minutes. You could have one 20 minute session, two 10 minute sessions or four five minute sessions. And it turns out the four five minute sessions is the least effective. You want to meditate for as long as you can every time you do it, because you get into this prolonged sense of peace and mindfulness and leashing that monkey and the longer you do it the more momentum you have and by momentum i mean just the state of calm that you get into and overall uh, the benefits that come with it so if you do uh go meditate i recommend that you do it for 20 minutes at once Is it best to meditate in the morning or evening? I, uh, I'd say meditate any time that you're comfortable and do your best to keep that consistent uh, day by day. You want to, if you meditate in the evening because you have time to after whatever you have to do every day, then do so every day consistently. 10 minutes at first, maybe move on to 20 minutes. Uh, yes, Melanie. Hi, Eric. I have a question. Um, do you do silent meditation or you only do the guided meditation? That's a good question as well. Um, so for meditation, you can do it any way you please. There are a lot of YouTube videos of guided meditations of many different types. And it, you know, it's a voice, a calming voice that tells you to breathe. It's slow, it's really nice and calming. There's guided meditations, there's music for meditation, 
all on YouTube and there's silent meditation. Personally, I do silent meditation, sitting in a chair, relaxed, and if possible, in a dark environment. So you not only want it to be quiet for the ears, but dark for the eyes. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I have another question. <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah. So actually, who introduced this meditation method to you or you just uh, discover it, figure it out yourself? Just out of curiosity. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, meditation was something that my parents began doing before I did, and they um, reaped the benefits of meditation for years. And eventually they said, you should start doing it too, Eric, because it's so beneficial. So I was introduced to the mindfulness meditation techniques of focusing on your breathing and sitting still and doing nothing in silence, um, that sort of meditation by them. So I have to thank them for all the benefits that I've got from it. Cool, thank you. <laughs> and is the body gesture very crucial? So I'm gonna take this humorous example and say you are lying face down, flat on the ground, uh, and you are attempting to meditate. That's not quite the best way to do it. And I know that's an exaggeration, of course. Um, that's not very comfortable at all. But there is an optimal position. And you don't want to be like slouching in your chair, or like, like this, or anything. And that may feel relaxing, but it's both bad for your back and bad for the meditation. Uh, you want to be sitting perfectly straight up. And as the woman's voice said in the video, you want to feel your spine be strong and straight. Um, your back should be straight so you can feel mindful at your best. Any more questions? I think you missed one question. Is it best to meditate in the morning or evening? Uh, yes. Uh, I didn't exactly pick one because, because um, meditation is good at any time you want to. And you should do it consistently. Pick a time either in the evening or morning or maybe during a break in your work or school time and take that time to meditate. But you want to do that consistently, but if you can't, that's okay as well. So meditation is good anytime. Glad to answer these questions. These are all very good questions. So we should be sitting up straight and we can do it any time of the day. Uh, and uh, because I said, just because I said that shorter times are less effective doesn't mean that they're not useful. Uh, you can do breathing exercises and meditate at any time of the day that you want to. It's always helpful, no matter when you do it, as long as you're taking the time to train your mind, your monkey mind, to stay still and get rid of those thoughts. But if they come by, don't mind them. All right, that seems to be about it. Thank you everyone for uh, listening to this event about mindfulness and meditation. Uh, I'm very grateful that you all came to listen and I hope that everyone has really gotten a thorough understanding of just how beneficial mindfulness and meditation is. I hope that you do this every day. And if you don't, 
that's okay. It's, uh, it's a chance for you to feel better in your day-to-day -day life. And I hope everyone has a great day. Maybe even meditate at some point today. Thank you, everyone.